as much as we want to say it's different, it's still the same. The objective is you got to convey a way as a comedian to make people feel better about what life it is they live. That's your job. Do you? That might be through a tweet. That might be through a text. That might be through a video, a skit, a vine, a fucking Instagram post for 30, 40, 50, an hour, minute of stand up. The goal is the same. You got to touch the people and make them feel something different. Make them think. If my goal is to make you think, cool. If my goal is to make you laugh and laugh at yourself, cool. If my goal is to just make you feel like this moment should last forever, then that's it. Yeah, I keep it going for Kevin. Damn fool Simpson. Let him hear it. Give it up for everybody else. See if cash is tonight. You see him tonight. Give it up for him. All right. We in here, ain't we? Where the black daddies at? Black daddies in here make some noise. <laughs> Ladies, y'all can clap for them. Clap for them black daddies. All y'all got one. If you don't like the nigga or not, that's a personal problem. <laughs> Black daddies don't get enough credit. You know what I'm saying? Black daddies are one of the most sought after, sometimes most hated, but yet most needed people in our community. They are a very, very, very pivotal part in our family structure. A lot of us wouldn't be who we are today without a black daddy. I'm one of the cats that grew up with my daddy and also had a fortunate opportunity to have my grandfather and my great-grandfather in my life until I was 12 years old. So it's, uh, my perspective on life is a little bit different. Might be a little bit shrewd. I love black men, old black men, because the ones I grew up was very no nonsense. They ain't believe in crying. They ain't believe in pouting. They ain't believe in wine. I remember very, very vividly, I'm five years old playing little league football. I get all the air knocked out of me, and probably I felt like the hardest hit I never felt in my whole life. Now, most times, most parents, when your kid get hit at five and get the dog shit knocked out of them, y'all run to the sideline, the mom be, oh, my baby, I hope he all right. They ain't happen with me. My daddy and my granddaddy was on the sideline like, hey, get your goddamn ass up. You done fumbled the goddamn ball. <laughs> now what we going to do? Shit you down, two touchdowns, man, what the fuck? Like, nigga, there's no sensitivity at all. Partially because they grew up working their ass off. My great-grandfather had a sixth grade education. Sixth grade, the nigga was a full man. <laughs> sixth grade, that's it. <laughs> nigga, you imagine if all you knew was what you learned up until the sixth grade? <laughs> Some of these fucked up school systems still had niggas coloring in the sixth grade. <laughs> coloring in maps and shit. This nigga left in sixth grade and got rent, nigga. You imagine getting rent in seventh grade? I couldn't even keep up with the goddamn house key in seventh grade. I did, daddy, I left the key. God damn, this nigga, you ain't shit. And all black men, they work so hard. They work their whole life. Their whole life revolved around the jobs they had. They done worked everywhere. But when they finally get a chance to retire, boy, that's, the, that's when you see the smile on their face. Normally you catch them like in the barber shop or coming out the store, one of the old black men from the neighborhood. Boy, they got the smile on their face. They got the walk. They got the, hey, 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 hey. What you doing next Tuesday, man? <laughs> Shit, I don't know, man. Man, come on down to the goddamn Holiday Inn ballroom, nigga. I'm retired from the school system. That's right. I was driving that 52 school bus. I was driving it from 1989 to 1994. That's what them hoes gonna tell me. It's my fault I left the little retarded boy at the bus stop. I ain't pick him up. <laughs> Shit, he been riding the same goddamn bus for 363 days out of the year. You should've known we bus to get goddamn home. Talking about I should've went back and picked him up. Well, nigga, no next time. <laughs> my told me I won't get my pension. Shit, I want my pension and I got it too. Man, what you doing next Thursday? I don't know, but dog. man, come on down to the goddamn volunteer fire department, man. I'm retired from the chemical plant. That's right. I was a chief safety inspector down there at the plant down there. Made sure everybody had on their goggles and their gloves and shit. I was down there from 1974 to 1983. That's what them hoes gonna tell me. It's my fault. Bobby got his back burnt up in the goddamn chemical fire. Talking about he was drinking on the job. I knew goddamn well he was drinking on the job. He was drinking with me every day on the goddamn job. I told Bobby, I said, you can't drink this goddamn Hennessy before you go in there fucking with me. I do this every day in my goddamn life. She ain't talking about I wasn't going to get my pension. Oh, I wanted my pension, and I got it too. Them niggas work their ass off all the time. 
Ladies, if you grew up in a single parent household, make some noise in here right quick. You the only woman that grew up in a single parent household? <laughs> so everybody ain't had mama and daddy. Oh, this the two parent household comedy show. Y'all define the statistics in this bitch. If you didn't, you grew up with just a mama, don't think she did it by herself as much as she proclaimed to be. It was always an old black man lurking behind the scenes, <laughs> dropping off money. And in them days, you know, it wasn't no Viagra. They wasn't fucking. They were just getting sugar <laughs> and a plate of food. <laughs> you always trying to figure out who that extra plate of two wings and <laughs> on, the, on the stove is for. That's for Mr. James. Or Mr. Clyde, whichever one. Clyde comes sliding his ass through that. Hey, baby, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, you know, you know how to cook. Boy, you remind me of my first wife, Tawana. Let me get that sugar and get on out of here. Leave a whole goddamn paycheck. You don't ever see the nigga till you graduate. That's graduation day, the nigga show up with an envelope. Hey, your mama told me you was doing good in school. Here's some money for your books. Who the hell is you? I'm Mr. Clyde. My man told you I was? Clyde, yeah. Let me know when you ready to move. They dependable as hell. Your mom be trying to downplay the nigga like he just somebody from the church. Clyde ain't been to church in 30 years. That nigga been working double shifts on Sunday his whole goddamn life. But when you need him, though, he right there on the job. Oh, y'all need to move? Don't worry about it. Give me the goddamn sofa. I got the goddamn sofa. Put it on my back. I got it. Yeah, I worked for you, Hall. I was there from 1989 to 1994. That one hoes gonna tell me I nicked up the goddamn bedroom set. That bedroom set was fucked up when I got there. <laughs> you know, seeing a black man love a black woman is a powerful thing, too. There's a certain level of understanding that comes with black love. That's why a black women act irrational sometimes when shit go wrong. Because they love when you way deeper. We have to realize black women love us like we their husband, even though we ain't married. I ain't know that shit. They be like, so you just going to do me like that? Like, I give you my all, my everything. Like, damn, bitch, we just started talking two weeks ago. <laughs> you going to give me your everything today? I ain't shit. <laughs> Oh, I'm the only nigga that's done <laughs> tried to hide his ain't shitness. <laughs> it happens, bro. It's weird. I don't know. I'm the dude that whenever girls, when I was dating before I got married, get with me, they always come right off their whole phase and then want to turn their life around when they get to me and shit. Like I be like I had one girl come over to my house and I'm like watching the movie. I'm trying to crank it up. And she's like, uh uh, I just wanna tell you, you know, I gave my life back to God. I'm like, nigga, today? You gonna let her get saved today? I know you done fucked two of my homeboys. That's why I called you over here. <laughs> no, I don't even wanna have sex with you. I just wanna lay right here on you. No, I don't wanna do nothing tonight. No, we don't gotta do nothing. I'm just Standing here, God damn. You be in that thing hard as hell. You know, you get, you get your life together real quick, too. My father died a year ago, and it, it definitely changed my life because I realized what it was like finally for the first time in my life to not have a father figure in my life. I knew if I didn't have a daddy when I was growing up, oh, my life would have definitely been fucked up. I fucked my life up so bad in seven months, I was like, shit. This was this no daddy shit is about? This shit is hard. <laughs> I had a drug addiction, an alcohol addiction, went to jail, damn near lost my family and tried to pull the shit all back together in six months. Like, nigga, in six months? I was doing all type of shit. Drinking too much. Because see, the problem is when you go through grief, they don't get you shit that they get like women when they go through grief. When black men lose somebody, when you lose somebody in your family, you know what they show up to you with? Hennessy to your house. <laughs> Ain't gonna help you? A, a gallon of crown with the handle on it? How the fuck is this gonna help me get through my problems the right way? 
Yeah, man, take this now. Just, you know, go push your own through, bro. Push your own through. <laughs> Nigga, this ain't going to help me. I want some flowers, too. <laughs> I need a massage. I need some candles in here, man. I, in, in, in six months, I get 18 bottles of Hennessy, three grams of cocaine, and a half a pound of marijuana. But it came to me in pieces, though. Niggas just kept drumming up. Now, listen now. I know this ain't what you do. But when you get low, take a little bump and it get you back up. <laughs> like, nigga, that's going to help me, man. You know, when you start drinking, they always tell you, you know, try and find, you know, answer your problems in the bottle. But they don't tell you. The bottle will talk back to you. You be sitting there trying to have your rational thought and Hennessy be right there on your side. You're like, you know what? I ain't worried about that bill. Fuck it. Hennessy, like, you know what you should do? Call the, call the light company. Tell them to kiss your ass. <laughs> Hennessy, I don't think that's what I should do. But it sounds like the right thing to do. Then you add cocaine to the mix. That's a whole other nigga that's in the car with you. Cocaine in the backseat telling you some whole other shit. Nah, 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 nah. Nigga, light your phone bill on fire. Light your light bill on fire. And burn it in your front yard. Tell them hoes, kiss your ass. Put it on Instagram. Now I don't think cocaine, that's what I should do tonight. I'm sorry. Ladies, if you ain't never been with a black man, an older black man, they will change your outlook on your life. If you got insecurities about your body size or body type, make love to an old black man and see how you feel afterwards. That nigga make you feel like Beyonce when you get in that goddamn bedroom. You up here talking about, I don't like my stomach. Get with an old black man and see how he make you feel. First of all, he ain't even finna just jump and try and have sex with you right away. He gonna have you naked on the side of the bed. He gonna come out there at that front room and walk in that bedroom like this. God damn. Look at that right there. God damn. That is all right. That is all right with me. Woo! When you hear that right there, them niggas turned on. They don't even say shit to fine girls when they see you in the grocery store. They just walk by and they look at you. Woo! You get a real old nigga with a hat, he lift his head. How you doing? Woo! <laughs> you sitting there on the edge of the bed trying to cover up. I don't know my stomach. Let me tell you something. You move your goddamn head. Look at all that. That is the Lord's work right there. Goddamn. Shit, look at you. All that lame Brian panties on. Take that shit off. Oh, let them titties. Oh, don't let them titties fall. Shit. Hold on, let me get my car jack, jack them titties up. Shik, 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 shik. Hold on, I gotta get it up under the frame. Shik, 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 shik. Let me get my other jack, put it under the stomach. Shik, 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 shik. Look at all that good pussy under there. Look at all this good pussy right here. Oh, if my dick still work, girl, I work you like a part-time job. Yo, cause they dick didn't work. Hey, out of there. Not no more. Oh no, not with all these ads on the internet, on Facebook, they everywhere. Are you suffering with erectile dysfunction? <laughs> Do you feel like you want to last longer with your loved one? <laughs> For $29.99, you can get the cure. Man, these old black men popping these Viagras like Tic Tacs. They call each other before they pop them. Tony, you took yours? I'm about to take mine now. I'm taking it right before the show. Yep, he's ready. <laughs> dick be so hard, you can check your blood pressure through your dick. Yeah, it's hard. You was hard like that? Yep, sure is. You know they don't wear no drawers when they go out. They just have slacks and dick under there. Love they pull their pants all the way up. How y'all doing tonight? Y'all doing all right? Good evening, good evening, good evening. Now y'all looking nice tonight. Woo! And they'll do something kinky to you you ain't never had done before. They love to put you in positions and do stuff to you you ain't never had done. You see, they dick been in retirement. It's been up in the rafters. It's like, it's hanging up in the rafters like a championship banner. Yep, there goes my dick up there. It was championship dick, 1968 to 1993. Had that heart surgery. That valve took me out of here. Now I'm back. Bring my dick down. 
They get your ass in that bedroom and look at you. Look at that right there. It is nice. It is your way. Stay right there. You said, what are you doing? What, what, what you doing? Oh, girl, you know. You're supposed to knock before you come in somebody's house. <laughs> you are not ready to have sex with a man that's got his name on his top pocket. Who gave you this dick right now? Tony O giving you this dick. <laughs> you are not ready to have sex with a man that's got a tire pressure gauge in his top pocket. Yeah, baby, you need to get that back tire aired up to 29.9 pounds PSI. And for you women in here that don't understand, you think you a bad bitch. I hear that all the time. That's why I'm a bad bitch. I'm a boss bitch. That's cool. I got these red bottoms. I got my nails done. I'm a boss bitch. But your back tire is, is, is all the way slicked down to the Y. <laughs> you think you a bad bitch. You riding around here. One rainstorm going to take your ass right off the freeway. You trying to figure out my car out of line. No, bitch, you ain't got no ties. You out here getting nails done every week. You need to get some more ties on the back. My pussy the bomb, my pussy the bomb. No, I'm going to tell you who pussy the bomb. The woman that's got four new brand new ties on the goddamn car. That's the person they can't risk losing. <laughs> Ladies, it's your job to let us know what's wrong with your family before we meet them. Now, after I met my wife's family for the first time, I stayed in a family house in Chicago for a weekend. I come in the house, I'm sitting there at the dinner table. The only person trying to tell me what's going on is the granddaddy, but his lingo is so old, I don't understand. You say, hey man, remember from last time, I'm gonna let you know now, hey, the CD got a scratch in it. The CD has a scratch in it. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And the grandma comes over, y'all want some pancakes? How you doing? I'm gonna fix you some pancakes. I'll be right back. She walks off the granddaddy start again. Hey, 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 hey. Told you CD got a scratch in it now. CD, it's got a scratch in it. Hey, you see, you see. She come back, no pancakes. What's your name? Uh, Billy. You want some pancakes? Yeah, was, yes, yes, ma'am. I'll be right back. She walks off. He started again. Hey, 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 hey. She got the car, but she ain't got the keys. <laughs> hey, hey, she got the elevator, but it don't go to the top. She come back to the table again. No pancakes in her hand. She said, hey, how you doing? What's your name? I said, Billy. She said, you want some pancakes? I said, yeah. She walks off. He started again. Hey, hey, hey. She got the table, but she ain't got the chairs. I said, man, why don't you just tell me this woman got Alzheimer's? Hey, you the one came around here dressed like Elder Barge. <laughs> Want to be part of the goddamn family and shit. So we go upstairs. I done had a long day. As I flew to Chicago, you know, when you eat and you fly, that, that first shit hits you. You feel like you're about to give birth. You know, the etiquette is you're trying to find the bathroom with the window in it. It ain't got no window in it, so you just in there in that stuffy-ass bathroom, but you're like, fuck it. It's got to happen. It's got to happen right now. So I creeps in the bathroom, close the door. I'm sitting on the toilet, the sink right here, the shower right here. That first log came out. I was like, oh, yeah, I need to go and turn this shower on right now. Let the steam hit this because I'm not coming out here. I'm jumping my ass right in the shower. So I'm in there in the shower, getting ready to get in the shower. I'm finishing up. All of a sudden, the door creaks open. And I yell, hey, hey somebody in here. I am paying no more mind. The door keeps coming open. I say, hey, yo, hey, somebody in here, man. Hey, hey, I'm in here. I'm in here. Door gets pushed open hard as hell. <laughs> in walks a man, 6'4", 280 pounds, with his drawers around his ankles <clears throat> and his meat out. I look at his face, but he got this face right here. He said, I got pee pee right now. I said, hey, big dog, y'all put that up. Like, I'm in here, big dog, I'm in here. He, uh -uh, I got pee pee right now. I got pee pee right now. Scoot over, I pee pee with you. No, 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 nigga, ain't no pee pee with me. Big dog, put that thing, hey, put him up, big dog. Hey, big dog, you gotta put that up, man. Put him up, big dog. Yeah, I got pee-pee right now. I guess that pee-pee in the sink. This man done unrolled his dick and put it into the sink. I realized at that moment I was not dealing with a normal person based on the fact that his drawers was all the way around his ankles at the bottom and his ass was out and he was now peeing in the sink. I had to pee-pee a whole lot. I said, big dog, you gotta put that up, bro. That is too close to me right now. I started yelling for help, baby! Hey, yo, baby! 
Hey, man, your boy here, your kid folk here, he got his meat out. Hey. Wife don't come. Door creaks open. Who is it? Granddaddy. Granddaddy ain't said shit to me. He walks right in and starts talking to, I guess, his nephew. Hey, hey, man, hey, what I told you about your pants being around your goddamn ankles? Man, pull your pants up over your ass. You got your asshole out. Somebody put your thumb in your ass. Now you're going to have a problem. You got your back door open. See, somebody get right in there like that. Then you're going to be crying. That's all right, granddaddy. And he said, hey, man, hey, look, hey, hey, look, hey, look, elder bars, you smell like shit. You look like somebody crawled in your ass, took a shit in your stomach, and died. Smell like a bag of dead dog dicks in here. Embarrassed ain't the word. Tell people your family is crazy. Every woman in here right now, I can tell you, has a crazy person that they love that is right there in the inner circle. They come in pairs. You think the goddamn Golden State Warriors got an offense. You have not seen the offensive movement of crazy inside of your woman's group thread of group chat. That group chat is the is evil. Because see, it's elevated levels of evil in that, that group chat that she got with her best friends. See, it's two other people in that group chat. See, it's her best friend that's just down with her. Then it's that other friend that's super crazy. She wants to kill everybody. <laughs> then it's the hoe that's in the group. That hoe in the group, that's the one you got to be worried about too. Because once the hoe and the crazy woman get together with your woman, you got a serious situation on your hands. I had posted a picture. I had did a show with a woman. And we posted it. Boom. Great, great night of comedy. Put it up. One of the women that knows my wife done screenshot the picture sent it to the group, group thread and started a conversation up. I guess this is how niggas doing it in 2019. <laughs> Out here laughing and kiki and kaka and with bitches and shows. So this how, your, that's, this how your husband get down? I'm like, uh, in my head, I don't know this going on. I'm just thinking everything cool. I'm just taking a picture. My wife having a full dialogue. Well, he said he had a show. With this type of bitch, I guess right. I guess I'm just dumb. I guess how I get down is too old fashioned. Maybe we should do something about this. Now, here comes the crazy bitch. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go up there and cut that bitch ties and I'll fight that bitch. The hole in the bottom of the group, you know what? He probably fucking that bitch and giving her the money for his rent. You should do something about it. Now I get the phone call. So what's up with your friend? Uh, what you mean, what's up with my friend? The one she doing the show with. Who, Lunell? <laughs> the fuck you think me and Lunell finna do? Well, I'm just saying, I mean, it don't look right. What the fuck is me and Lou Nell finna do? This is my good friend. This woman 40 years older than me. <laughs> Lou Nell can't get pregnant and have no baby by me. If we do, it's gonna be a black Benjamin Button. <laughs> the fuck? You gotta use your common sense, man. The common sense gotta stay in your brain at all times. I'm gonna say this to you white people that's in here looking at me like this. I am not Jesse Smollett, fuck you. <laughs> had that happen to me twice since I've been in Atlanta. I was coming out of at the gas station, white dude. Hey, Jesse, what happened, man? We're rooting for you. What the hell happened up there? Man, fuck you. <laughs> See, I ain't mad, though. When white people mistake you for somebody, it's all right. Because they genuinely think you that person. I had a dude come up to me in Chili's one day and was like, hey, I just want to let you know something, buddy. Me and my wife love all your music, genuine. My pony <laughs> is our favorite goddamn song. <laughs> I do not look like genuine. But see, when niggas do it, they add on shit to let you know. They know that ain't who you is. They say shit like, they'll walk by you on the phone. Man, look at this old genuine looking ass nigga right here. Man, look at this Russell Wilson hair ass nigga right here. Hey, Russell, where's Sierra at? Fuck you, man. <laughs> or Kelly. Hey, man. He provided great music to us. But he was pushing it in that goddamn interview. That interview went a little bit too far. <laughs> and we all know the point when we knew that nigga was lying. <laughs> and if you don't know how to tell when a black man lying, it's when he hit the high pitch, high scream yell. <laughs> the high pitch cry, dead giveaway. You getting basic questions asked to you, and then he just holler out, y'all kidding me with this shit? I said, oh yeah, that nigga lying now. He lying. <laughs> Everything after this is a lie. Because that's what niggas do when you ask them too many questions. So you went to the club at 2.30, now you coming home at 
445, and you just trying to tell me you ain't out fucking with no hoes? Man, y'all kill me with this shit! And that's a lie right there, dog. Nigga, when that high pitched cry come out, that is a bold faced lie. I lie. I done done this shit before. You know that voice start getting elevated. If you ask your man a question like, so where'd you go after you left the club? She when you got something to eat, came home. He ain't lying. Well, he a great liar, but he ain't lying at that point. But when a nigga hit you with the dramatics, so you telling me you left the club at 2.30, you come on 4.45. Oh, see, there they go. See, there you go with that bullshit. <laughs> Believe in these hoes and your whole ass friends over me. Now we got to flip your whole world over. Do your friends give a fuck about you? No. That bitch don't like you. Now you sitting there trying to argue the shit out. You jammed up. I get jammed up. I just decided one day in my life, I'm going to stop lying. My wife asked me a question. So where you going at the club? Fuck some bitches. Went right to the room. <laughs> now I wasn't lying. But she thought, oh, you so stupid. Go on in here. <laughs> See, we can't be playing into the shit and giving it too much energy. You know, we come in the house. So this is how let you going to come in? Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Nothing. I'm good. Ain't shit good when they say I'm good. I'm good mean shit fucked up. Because when shit ain't cool in the house, that's a whole era of a relationship if you don't understand what that is. It's like we together, everything's good, we ain't cool right now. I mean, y'all ain't broke up and moved out the house, but y'all ain't cool. Ain't cool is like, hey, you know, the house on fire. Hey, smoking here, you might want to do something, figure it out. But when shit ain't cool, you ain't trying to go back to shit being fucked up. I done been through ain't cool. Me and two of my homeboys went to Vegas for a fellas trip. We kicking it. We all married. We understand the rules. Hey, man, we'll have a good time. We're going to respect our wives, but we're still going to have a good time. Well, my homeboys, Craig, he decides, because he think he the shit, he going to fly his little side bitch in from Charlotte. She ain't never been nowhere in her whole goddamn life. This her first trip to Vegas. So he flies his little side bitch in. She can't wait to turn up in the airport. She got her phone on Facebook Live. Oh, bitches in Vegas doing it big. Me and Bay doing us. She do the Facebook Live, goes around some kind of way. Craig Q Dog brand gets seen in the video. Craig's wife calls my wife, my wife called me. And me and my wife ain't cool. First thing she say is, uh, so what hoes y'all got with y'all? I said, what you talking about? She said, don't play, nigga, what hoes you got with y'all? I ain't got nothing to do with Craig and the hoe he brought with him. <laughs> I ain't got to do with that at all. My boy Jay told me, man, you can't drop me in the grease. I said, man, fuck you, me and my wife just got back cool. I'm not finna go through sleeping on the couch. Eating out a can for six months because this nigga want to fly a rat bitch in? <laughs> nigga, that's on him. Got her all that brunch. She don't even know what brunch is. What is brunch? I never had that. What restaurant is that? <laughs> then she's saying stupid shit to piss me off all, all the weekend. Yes, I have the salmon. The what? The salmon. The waitress stopped it. Excuse me, what did you want to have? The salmon, bitch, the salmon. I said, yeah, baby, this nigga's crazy. I don't know what Craig doing. This bitch don't even know how to say salmon. And if you thought salmon was said salmon, it's salmon. And you part of the goddamn problem. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with saying salmon? That's what I say. <laughs> Your husband's sitting there looking at you right now. Don't even worry about it, baby. <laughs> this nigga don't know what he talking about. He crazy. <laughs> That's when you make the decision to decide to agree with your wife or your woman, no matter what the fuck she say. <laughs> you know you got a crazy girl when you try and tell her, hey, now, look, we've been doing good, man. You ain't got to do the crazy shit. And I thought we were straight. Now, you and the nigga at the comedy show, y'all keep fucking with bitches. Because <laughs> it's always the bitch fault that y'all's situation is the way it is. It ain't over. You think you forgiving? You ain't forgiving, nigga. This shit is in a, in a box under a layer of dirt that is waiting to be grabbed in. It ain't got nothing to do with the shit that's happening right now. I'm going to walk you through that situation. You got caught with a woman. 
your girlfriend to bring that shit up in every situation that go wrong because it's that bitch fault. <laughs> Case in point, I got jammed up in the club one night. I got caught dancing on a girl and I was drunk. I wasn't, you know, I'm tripping, I'm wilding. So, I'm doing my thing. My wife asked me about it. I admit it. I say, okay, cool. Two months later, me and my wife go to the movies. Get to the movies to see it. Tickets are sold out. We can't get in the movies. First thing my wife says is, I guess we can't see the movies, but I bet if you was with that bitch, we would have got in there. Maybe you called a bitch from the club and we could have walked in the movie. Maybe if I was that bitch, we could have bought the tickets pre-sale. I was like, what the fuck this got to do with anything? Another situation. We're driving. Car gets a flat tire. We're on the way to my wife's best friend's baby shower. I'm on the side of the road. I call AAA. AAA says it's going to take two hours. I say, man, you know what? I think I can put this dinky on, get, the, get us rolling, get to a tire shop, change it, and still make it to the baby shower on time. So I'm on the side. I'm changing the tire. Dinky got a flat in it. Means we can't go nowhere on this. We gotta wait for AAA. I come to the window. I say, "Hey, babe, uh, the spell is um, uh, what's wrong with the spell? Because I mean, I'm ready to go. We gotta go. We got, we, we, did you change it? Yeah, I, I put the spell on there, and um, the spell is flat. Oh, the spell is flat. <laughs> I see. I see the spell. So that means we can't leave." I said, yeah, but we know it's only going to be like an hour and a half, really. We called AAA 45 minutes ago. They'll be here in a few minutes. I guess, I see. I guess. If I was that bitch, I would have had a spare tire that had air in it. But no, I'm on the side of the freeway with your dumb ass that don't know how to air shit up and get AAA out here. You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> she rolls the windows up, and I'm sitting on the side of the road with a, a flat spare tire for an hour and a half. AAA come. I say, uh, yeah, man, we got to get in. He says, uh, man, well, can I get in the car and put the car in reverse? And then that way we can put the car in neutral. Then we can move it up for it. Then I can get that on tire off for you. I said, okay, cool. I go to the window. I'm knocking on the window. <laughs> Baby, you got to roll the window down so I can come out. I don't know you. I don't know you. Please get away from my car. Triple A dude, he white. He's like, hey, man, what's going on? I mean, uh, she's, she, tell her to open the door. Was it get it? I said, man, you got to go up there. Uh, what's, I mean, what do you mean? I, I just tell your wife to open the door. I said, I'm, all right, I'm gonna try again. Yeah, baby, you gotta rip the window down. He gotta put it in neutral. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. Please get away from my window before I call the police. I said, hey man, you gonna have to go over there and talk to them. He gets the tire put on. We roll off. Shit don't be over. Shit don't never be over, bro. Shit ain't forgotten. That shit is tucked away. But listen, I can tell you one thing. If you don't believe shit else I say tonight, understand this. Telling the truth will set you free. They don't want to hear a lie, bruh. My wife, much like your woman, wants to know the truth. You know why? It's not about what you did. It's about them feeling like you put this person in a high enough category to lie to them over the shit. Tell them the truth. Hurt their goddamn feelings. They don't want no more lies. Start telling the truth about every goddamn thing. <laughs> shit, I'm drinking now. What'd you think of my, my, ne uh, my niece's uh, recital? I think the shit is fucking horrible. I <laughs> think she needs to stop wasting her money on piano lessons. The little bitch can't even read. <laughs> her auntie died and shit. We leaving the funeral. She's like, that was a beautiful service. No, the fuck it wasn't. That pastor was drunk. <laughs> And I think he'd be touching little boys. <laughs> Everybody wants the truth. They don't want the truth all the time. Fellas, you don't want the truth. You can't handle the truth. You know why? Because we stupid. You know why we stupid? Because we think stupid shit. Most of us in this room think we got the biggest dick our wife has ever seen in her life, which is definitely a lie. Because we say stupid shit. Girl, you know when I get out of work, I'm gonna tear that booze up. I'm gonna bust that shit down. You don't know how stupid you sound saying that shit. 
He sound real dumb. Do you think you want somebody to bust your dick down? Does that sound fun? You want your dick beat up? Yeah, I'm gonna beat that ass up when I get home, girl. You get naked, I'm gonna beat that ass up. You full of crown and you think that's some romantic shit to say. You want somebody putting their bad built body on your back for two hours? Sweating and huffing and damn near about to die on you? Shit don't sound fun at all, do it. Sound fucking stupid. I don't care how big you think your dick is, I want you to remember one thing. You gotta realize a woman's body was built a specific way to deal with certain things. And unless your dick has some shoulders on it, <laughs> and a cranium, nigga, you ain't doing shit. I'm a father of four. After my second child, I stopped even trying to brag about my dick. I seen a whole nine and a half pound baby come out of there. I see, I knew all the time, this ain't that type of hollering. You ain't out here giving out no epidural dick. <laughs> You ain't never had no dick when she said, stop, give me the epidural now before I take some more. No, nigga. Your wife ain't never had to chew on ice chips to take that dick you got. <laughs> she ain't never had to <laughs> take that. So stop believing you doing damage and shut up. Stop me when I'm lying. You want to play a game with truth? Ask it. Is my dick really the biggest on the way home? Don't do that. <laughs> One of you women will be dead in the fucking newspaper tomorrow. Eight wives are mysteriously killed after leaving the Atlanta Comedy Theater. The story of Ted. <laughs> Y'all want to know that that your wife done took so much dick from some person in her life that she had to compromise her sanity? She's not with you because of your dick. It's with you because of your heart. It's a nigga in the nose. She with me because of my dick. And I knew it. <laughs> man, in the course of this past six, seven months, man, I done fucked up so bad. The drinking and shit, it got really, really bad. I just find myself drinking. In the club by myself, I'm eight shots in, and I, I'm the person that's running around high-fiving people I don't know. <laughs> hey, hi, hey, man, turn it up tonight. <laughs> when you start partying by yourself in the club, you got a problem. Now, I love my wife, but I found my, myself one night talking to something I had no business talking to. I'm in the club, I'm doing my thing, I'm lit. See, something at the bar, ain't nobody been hollering at it all night. I'm drunk. I got to say something to her. I walk right up, put my meat right on the bus, say, what's up? It is a grown fool stud at this bar. <laughs> Baseball cap, dreads, white V-neck t-shirt, Levi's, Jordans. She turned around, hey, bro, hey, hey. God damn it, Bobby Valentino, I ain't with that straight shit, no? <laughs> you get your goddamn Al Jarreau hair ass about it. I said, my bad, Queen Latifah. <laughs> she was like, I like what you like. I was like, no, nah, baby, I like what you got. <laughs> we ended up taking shots as a peace offering. Two shots turned to four shots. Four shots turned to six shots. Six shots turned to eight shots. We are fucked up. We so fucked up. The bad bitches came out of her. She done turned to me and was like, oh, I'm so fucked up. I don't know what I'm going to do. I was like, let's get out of here, girl. Let's go. <laughs> We walking through the club like we've been going together since high school. <laughs> you know you walking out the club with something ugly when the bouncer stop you and be like, hey, hey, that nigga tripping. Oh, this nigga tripping. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> Russell Wilson done left with a stud. <laughs> we drunk looking like a young gay couple. <laughs> we in love. <laughs> I get to her house, I take my Jordans off, she took her Jordans off. <laughs> I pulled my skinny jeans down, she pulled her skinny jeans down. She said, you lay down. I said, no bitch, you lay down. <laughs> <laughs> it 
What I didn't tell y'all was I had did a half a gram of cocaine that night, and the cocaine was right there in the room with me. I'm giving my best action. I done hit it with this one. <laughs> Tearing her ass out the frame. Cocaine says, reach under the bed and grab that dildo she got. I said, you right. That's what I'm going to do. I, was, I said, right, he can take some of this real dick, fake dick, real dick, fake dick, real dick, fake dick, real dick, fake dick. Fake dick. <laughs> Then I realized, I, <laughs> I was like, man, this is a cheating situation. Gonna put a plastic dick in somebody. That ain't fair. <laughs> to make it fair for everybody, I think the plastic dick should go numb like a regular dick do after a certain time. <laughs> you just got a hard object all night. Boy, I turned that stud out. Two months later, she called my phone. I answered, I was like, what's up? Hey, bro, what the fuck you did to me, my nigga? You done messed the bitch up. I done missed my period. I'm pregnant. I said, well, congratulations. You about to be a single father, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she about to be the mama and the daddy. <laughs> Said that little nigga be all right. She going to fold his clothes and teach him how to hoop. <laughs> I ain't shit. I am not shit. <laughs> Ladies, it's time I uh, decided to tell you some things that your counterpart may not want to tell you. A couple of things have frustrated us that uh, they might be too scared to say. We would appreciate it if you not. <sighs> <laughs> trying to build the courage of the words. So I want to make sure this comes across clear. It's how you should stay. <laughs> okay? We would appreciate it if you keep things together. I ain't talking about your body. I'm just talking about it here. Shit you can control. You know, first of all, stop shaving your eyebrows off and drawing them bitches on all over here all the time. Then when you come to bed with us, you don't wash this shit off. Now I'm feeling like I'm finna fuck an Xbox or something. <laughs> like I'm in the bed with you. Please stop. And I'm gonna say this, because a lot of y'all think y'all doing us a favor. We appreciate the head that y'all give us. We appreciate it. That little anniversary head that pay their head that uh <laughs> income tax check head. <laughs> what we don't appreciate is you've been on this earth longer than 20 years. And you should know the proper technique to give a head. This is not the face of somebody that's about to suck dick good. I'm going to say that right now. You need to tuck your teeth. Stop coding with your teeth out like this. I'm about to suck your dick. No the fuck you not. I'm going to punch you in your mouth and get to some gums. Teething the shit out of us. Suffering in silence. Fellas, you can't say nothing. Because the moment you say, hey, baby, can you not use your teeth? Oh, I guess that bitch is the one you want to suck your dick. <laughs> Teasing us, just sitting at this. <laughs> <laughs> it feel good? Yeah, no. You like it? Yeah, no. You want to keep going? Yeah, no. Here's a sign that you give bad head. If you ever give your man head, and in the process, he tap you two times on the side of your head and say, hey, girl, come on up here. Let me get in the pussy. <laughs> your head is trash. <laughs> He'd rather have his dick slammed in a door, a heavy door, an Oldsmobile door, a Cutlass door, a deuce in the quarter door, than for you to keep teething the shit out of me. And if you're not laughing, women, you give bad head, bitch. It's you that's out here teething your man. Feel like he done put his dick in a squirrel mouth. <laughs> supposed to put two hands on it like a black pepper grinder. You're supposed to twist and turn, just like this right here. Twist and turn. 
See, if you're married, this is biblical right here. See, I'm going to tell you what your pastor ain't going to tell you. This is how you unlock your blessings. <laughs> see, you see, this, see this motion right here? See, this is the motion that's going to unlock your blessings. It's the key to your future. Like new car, new house, red bottoms, Beyonce tickets, trips to Jamaica, three bundles of hair, two car garage. You flap your wings and fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I give you everything in my goddamn pocket, you twist and turn like that. Think y'all gonna make 30 years of marriage and you out here acting like you scared to go downtown and hook these women up? You better eat. As if your life depended on it. If you're doing it right, fellas, it should sound like a roller coaster ride going to the top. It should sound like a roller coaster ride going to the top. Big dog, go on in and go downtown tonight. You go down there and you go for broke. <laughs> Leave the glasses on when you do it. <laughs> you know. This is what it should sound like. I'm about to come. Be down there so long, you, you start getting that locked jaw. <laughs> I don't know why they keep putting that bone on our nose right there. They can just be, oh, 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 oh. Start seeing them fireflies that you can't catch. <laughs> Nigga risking his life to please you. They put that leg pressure on your head, sound like you in the fish tank. <laughs> You are still going, man. <laughs> Your mouth so dry and locked up. What you need is some water or a kiss at that moment. Hey, this one woman gonna tell me I came up to get a kiss. She gonna turn her head like she ain't know where I just came from. I said, come here, girl. She was like, I'm good, my nigga, I'm good. I'm good. Watch out, uh-uh, watch out, watch out. This is you. You don't want to see what you serve in the community? You don't want to see what you feed in the streets? This is your JJ. Yeah, like my mouth been in a foreign place. Like I done licked the handrail on a bus stop or something. Like I got a mouth full of Flint water or something. This is your pussy. Why are you trying to turn away from it? If you don't want to take it, what makes you think I do? I go hard in the paint. I go hard, I go hard in the paint until you have to pat my back like a baby and so I burp, pat my back, bitch. <laughs> Get all the air out of my stomach. <laughs> you know, we mature, we gotta be adults about it, you know? <laughs> it's a big old nigga walking back there. That nigga sounded like he was heavy as hell. <laughs> well, talk to you about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I told myself when I came to Atlanta, this was going to be a place that I always open up and become very transparent. And uh, when you lose a loved one, it does that to you. Lost my daddy, I think I could tell you, losing someone is very hard. And on behalf of anybody who's lost someone, I can leave you with this before I get out of here. You have to do the family a favor when they grieve it. My dad was my best friend. He was a high school football coach and a principal. Touched a lot of people's lives. And if I could tell you anything on behalf of somebody that's lost somebody, I'm going to tell you this. Please do the family a favor and stop texting dead people. <laughs> Give them that time and space. Stop texting them, please, because somebody got that goddamn phone. My daddy died on a Friday. I had his phone. He was a school principal. Monday morning at 6.30, his phone going off. I slide a message open, I'm laying next to my wife, and I'm reading, Casey, from the job. I looked at my wife, I was like, what the hell is this testing the phone for? It's Casey. She's like, everybody agrees different, just read it, just read it. 
So I slide the message open and I read it. Hey, Bill, it's me, Casey, from the job. <laughs> Just want to let you know, man, I realize today you ain't going to be coming in this morning. Just want to let you know, man, I'm thinking about you on my way to work. Sade came on, and I know that's what you play in your office. Me and some of the Q-Dogs then put together a little offering for you to get you some nice flowers. We love you. We miss you. Your boy, Casey, from the job. I said, I'm grieving. I'm dealing with shit. My wife was like, everybody grieves different. I was like, man, I'm dealing with my own shit. I'm the only boy. I'm the oldest of three. I got to get on a conference call with my sisters because they're emotional and gullible. My baby sister, Brittany, she gets on a conference call, want to discuss my daddy's financial affairs. She says, well, I think what we need to do is we need to pay all of daddy's credit card debt off. I said, no, the fuck we not. Fuck Capital One. <laughs> if them motherfuckers want some money, them bitches better dig. I'll tell you what, me and daddy got the same name. I'm going to Home Depot. I'm finna run the checkup. I'm finna get the bag. Daddy told me, some having to meet a nigga get the bag. God damn it, that's what I'm finna do. I'm going to Home Depot. I'm about to get me two of them portable AC units for the back room. He said the back room is always hot. If you want something, you better meet me down there. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm dealing with shit. I've been to play with you. My other sister, she on the phone with Joanna. She says, well, I just want you to know the funeral home, they called. They want $2,700 extra. I said, for what? My daddy wanted to be cremated. Yeah, they want to embalm for it. Well, they said he's decomposing. We need to call over there. I said, give me the number. I'm going to call. I'll call the funeral home. I said, hey, man, what's up? Funeral home director. Oh, brother, amen, praise God. I just want to lift you up. The family of Willie Calvin Sorrows Jr. I just want you to know you're lifted. I said, hey, man, I ain't trying to hear all that shit today. What's up, man? My sister called me and told me, you want 2700 nigga. What's the problem? Well, brother, yeah, your father, he's decomposing, breaking down. He also needs some new drawers. Fuck them drawers. Leave the nigga naked. Get that fire started. Get the cremation started, man. Go ahead. Turn that pilot light on. Get that shit going. Now, what you need? I'm at Home Depot right now. What you need? Some butane, kerosene, propane. What you need? Get the goddamn fire started. You need some gas logs? Get the goddamn fire started. Run it up because you are not going to run a checkup with me. I got my own plan, dog. I got my own plan. And while I got you on the phone, I want to talk to you about this goddamn fly I seen on Facebook because I ain't approved of that goddamn fly. Got my daddy with some angel wings and a Gucci bag <laughs> and a Bentley and shit and some clouds behind him. You know they got them old people clouds and them drug dealer clouds. Whenever somebody die, they want to put them in these clouds. Get my daddy out them goddamn clouds, you son of a bitch. If I'd ask you to put my daddy in them goddamn clouds, you know, they put drug dealers in them clouds to try and make everybody believe they going to heaven and shit. <laughs> With these Louis Vuitton belts and shit. Get that shit off my daddy. Got my daddy with some clouds with some lightning bolts like he an X-Men or Avenger or something. Get my daddy out them clouds, you son of a bitch. I got my own plan, though. My daddy in them goddamn clouds. Shit pissed me off. Then on top of that, they using these young-ass pictures of my daddy. Everybody calling me, man, we sorry to hear about your brother. That ain't my brother, nigga. That's my daddy. <laughs> Trying to figure out what's going on. This time, about 12.30, my daddy phone go off again. Another text message. Who is it? Casey from the job. <laughs> Slide the message over. Hey, Bill, it's me. Casey from the job. <laughs> Just want you to know, bro, it's second lunch, and uh, we got meatloaf and mashed potatoes today. Your favorite. We had a fight and thought you was going to be there to break it up. We miss you. We love you. It's your boy, Casey, from the job. I turned to my wife. I said, he got one more time to text his phone. I'm going to give his ass what the fuck he want. He got one more time to text his phone. I'm going to give his ass what he want. Right after that, my, my stepmama called. She crying. She upset because my daddy named me sole beneficiary. Now, I know why my daddy named me sole beneficiary. Because she's stupid. That's why. Yeah. She calls me. I just don't understand. I know good and goddamn well why. I sent you the obituary file. You gonna call me back talking about, I don't know how to open a pitif. How do you open a padif? <laughs> a what? A padif. A pitif, the pitif ain't open. It's a PDF. Get your ass off my goddamn phone. 
She didn't open up the PDF file in Microsoft Paint. Now the picture's all blocky and shit. Then fuck the whole obituary up. This is the same woman that called me when I was having my fourth child. She called the hospital. She said, did you have a boy? I said, no. She said, well, what you have? <laughs> a ninja turtle, bitch. Now, well, get the fuck off my fucking phone with your dumb ass. I got a full-blown ninja turtle. Raphael is over here. Donatello and Michelangelo. <laughs> you got to practice to be that dumb. Daddy called me one day, about to lose it. Hey, man, I'm about to lose it. I said, what happened? Man, stepmama, I gave her one job. I said, look, it's $600 in the account. Make sure you take care of the bills in the house. It was two bills, I said, take care of the cable bill and the light bill. I said, what's wrong? Well, tell me which one you think she paid first. I don't know. What's the problem? I'm sitting in the dark right now. This bitch done paid the goddamn cable bill when the light bill was due. I said, what? I said, what'd she say? She said she wanted to make sure that I could watch my show. How the fuck you gonna watch the show with no lights? I said, yeah, you got something on your hands right there. That is a special layer of stupid right there. Before he died, he went through some shit. I'm from Houston. And you know what's went on out there, yeah. Hurricane Harvey came through, tore the city up. My daddy, being the black daddy that he is, too, too tough. They had been warned in the city about evacuating. He done been through all the hurricanes. He wasn't getting ran off. I call him, I'm in LA. It's sunny out there, weather's great. I say, man, he said it's about to be bad up there, man. What you gonna do, category three, you gonna get out of there? Oh man, shit, I ain't worried about no goddamn hurricane. Hurricane ain't gonna run me off. See, I'm a survivor, nigga. I'm a real man. See, I done went down there to the Home Depot. I got me one of them gas generators. I'm gonna be all right. I got me some meat in the freezer. We're gonna smoke some sausage. I got some deer meat I'm gonna put on. I got a pot of beans on with some Quentin Crock Pot. Nigga, we gonna ride the storm out. I said, it's category three, man. You don't wanna get out of it? Nah, man, we good. Me and my old lady finna snuggle up tight. Nigga, we gonna be all right. You worry about you out there with the earthquakes. <laughs> all right, that's Friday. Saturday comes. Goes from category three to a category five. I said, hey, man, you going to get out of that? What you going to do? Oh, man, shit, I done boarded up them windows down there, man. My house is on level ground. See, I know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I got me my movies. I got my DVD player out. I got all my shit up. If the cable go out, we good. The gas generator go out, we good. I done got me 12 pounds of ice. We going to ride this thing on out. I say, all right. Sunday comes. I go to the beach with my wife and my kids. I'm smoking, drinking, having a good time. We party. I get back to my phone because I left it in the truck. I got 19 missed calls. Who is it? My daddy. I picked the phone up, I called him and said, hey man, what's up? Hey man, cool team, get me out of here. Cool team, there's water everywhere. Help me, please. Step mama can't swim, the bitch gonna drown. Call somebody, please. Call the Uber man. I said, nigga, ain't no Uber boat, nigga, you over there. They had to rescue my daddy. I had to call the National Guard. I said, man, what happened? What happened to the rock you said was in the driveway to measure the water? Man, the goddamn rock done washed away. I can't see shit. There's water every goddamn well. I say, well, wh what happened? I called the National Guard. National Guard people said, well, the whole neighborhood is evacuated. My daddy was the only person left in the neighborhood. I said, man, you ain't see everybody else leave? No, I couldn't see everybody else leave. I done boarded up the goddamn windows. I couldn't see outside. Now he on Facebook Live in the motorboat getting rescued by the National Guard. Yeah, you see my house right here, Hurricane Harvey, fuck you. Thought you could kill a real nigga, I'm glad I got out of there. He doing interviews with the news and shit like he survived something crazy. Well, what did you think when the water started coming? Well, instinct took over, I just swam, you know, that's what I did, you know. You know, I was a lifeguard. I was down there at the lifeguard for the YMCA. I was there from 1974 to 1978. Them hoes won't tell me. My dick was hanging out the bottom of my drawers. <laughs> and it got me to thinking. It got me to thinking, like, in a real way, it's somebody got in a bad situation in a hurricane. 
Somebody got caught out there without their shit together in a hurricane. Because we know it was one dude that got caught slipping in a hurricane that where he wasn't supposed to be. At his side chick house. You know he got that call. Can you come over here and bring us some ice and some stuff? We don't know what we're going to do. Hey, now, now, you know I, got, I can't come over there right now. <laughs> but you just stay where you at and stay safe. Now, I don't got nothing. Can you just, all right, I'm going to come over there. He done went over there and dropped some meat off and some canned goods. <laughs> got some head and fell asleep. <laughs> Told his wife he was going to the store. Now the water done came all the way around all the cars and shit. <laughs> he can't get out. Now he out there trying to call his wife. Hey, baby, uh, shit that got real bad on me out here. Where are you? Uh, I'm way far out. You ain't going to find me. But if something happened to me, just know I died loving you and only you. I died being loyal to you, baby. I just want you to know I love you with all my heart. Well, where are you? I'm way out here, baby. You probably ain't going to find me. But everything's going to you. Just so happened this nigga get rescued, but he don't get rescued by the National Guard. He get rescued by the news team. News Channel 3, we have a couple on top of a house here, stranded in the middle of the hurricane. That's right, this is what real love looks like, folks. The man and the woman are clinging together for dear life. They are hanging on. There's a man and a woman on top of a house. We're going to let the rope down to try and rescue them. The woman is coming up. She's the safety. Ma'am, who's down there? My man. We're going to send the rope back down for the man, and the man has jumped back into the water. He's swimming away. Uh, Tony, zoom in so we can get a close-up. Get that goddamn camera out of my face. It ain't what it look like. Y'all killing me with this shit. I don't know. My energy is not low. It's not high. It's, uh, it's interesting because it's my first time performing in Atlanta. My dad's not here to do it with me. We're from a small town not far from here, Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's where I was raised at. So normally when I come to Atlanta to perform, we go to Chattanooga and we see all our family. Then we come in, I do my show, and I leave. You know, we live in Houston, so this is the perfect time for us to visit. So being here is definitely bittersweet. I sat in my room last night, drank after the show. I was thinking about my daddy a whole lot. Try to go to sleep, get a little rest. By 1.30, started nodding off. And I heard an alert. My daddy's phone went off. Picked the phone up, I looked at it, slid the message open. Who is it? Casey, from the job. Hey Bill, it's me, Casey, from the job. Just wanna let you know I watched three hours of paranormal activity. I got some sage lit and some candles and if you wanna visit me in the spirit and have a drink, it's okay. I'm just wondering where you are. Are you okay? Shit, I was drunk at that point. I replied right back to him. <laughs> Said, oh shit, me, Nipsey Hussle, Richard Pryor. We all just smoked the blunt, nigga. We up here, we about to go see Malcolm X perform, nigga. It's about to go down. I saw the little three dots right there like he was trying to read the shit to respond. I know he was fucked up. He was like, oh shit. <laughs> At that moment, I'm drunk and high. I went on my daddy's Facebook page and replied to his RIP wall. I'm just replying to the comments. We love you, Bill. I love you too. <laughs> we miss you, Bill. I miss you too. Somebody wrote back, Bill, is this you? I said, Ooh. I'm Billy Sorrells, y'all. Thank you, Atlanta. <laughs>